Good morning and welcome to worship here in ACT and Midmar, Clooney and Monimas Kintor and Kemne. We are so glad that you have joined us this morning for worship. We're having our morning blether, so if you have your cuppa, we're glad that you have joined us. And this morning we're just checking in to see how each other are doing and what is going on in each other's parish. So Neil, how are you doing and what is going on in Kintor? Uh, it's an exciting time in Kintor as far as anniversaries are concerned. Um, so hello everybody, nice to see you. Uh, we've got two, two anniversaries this week that we're celebrating. The first is we have our um, local uh, newspaper, uh, which we share as a congregation with the commu local community council called the Kintour Connect. And it celebrates its 10th anniversary this month. So we're celebrating that. And uh, it's, it's a lovely way that we connect with the, the local community, it advertises local businesses and things. So nice, nice to be part of. And the other anniversary is our Messy Church turns four years old. Uh, we've been running Messy Church for four years now. It's really been fantastic. And this, this Sunday um, in the afternoon, we'll be doing some Messy Church things. The, uh, the, the theme is, is uh, finding out where you belong, finding your place to belong. And uh, it's, it's been lovely that some of our families, young kids, uh, and in fact, the whole church family have found a place to belong in Messy Church. We have... Uh, octogenarians uh, who've come to Messy Church. So it's not people who think it's just for kids that have got it all wrong. Um, it's the whole church family and it's been a, a wonderful gift to, to our, our church family. So four years old this week. That is fabulous, Neil. I cannot believe it's four. I remember when you started that. I think that's great. So I'm going to have it go over to you. And, and you started Sunday School Online last week and your building's open. We would love to know how that went, Ewan. Well, both Clooney and Money Musk opened uh, at the regular times for a short service. The, the service was about 40 minutes long, but as somebody said to me afterwards, it's long enough when you're sitting on a pew without cushions and that you don't get to stand up for, for hymns. But it went, it went very well. We, we have a booking system, but we weren't fully booked by any means. I think about two thirds of the available seats were taken, you know, which meant, which it's actually okay because it means if anybody just crops up they can get a seat as well uh, for worship, although we do recommend booking. And the Sunday school began online, uh, and I think there's 13 or 14 families involved with that. Uh, and I, I think that will be meeting just once a, once a month, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But it was quite interesting. I had to do a wee talk on Zoom uh, to the Sunday school, uh, and it was about Jonah. So I was able to get a lovely background using the Zoom uh, backgrounds with the, the fish underwater. Uh, and, and I think more people were interested in the fish behind me than actually what I was saying. But yes, it, it's encouraging for it to be open, but it is a lot of hard work. And I want to just put online that it is hard work. Yeah. And thank you to the folk who do all the hard work in preparing the churches so that we can come together and worship God. Amen. We're so excited that it went well, and um, we do recognize that hard work. I want to thank all of those who are doing that behind the scenes and with video editing and with opening the buildings. And Sheila, you were in the process of having worship um, in buildings this week, so tell us more about that. Yes, we're, we're following in the steps this week of Clooney and Monty Musk. We're opening Echt on Sunday and everything's in place for that now, and that's going to be at the usual time of 10.15, and it's a booking system as the congregation will know and there's more information on the church website about that so we're hoping to welcome as many people as possible wednesday mornings between 11 and 12 are going to be open at um the church at midmar will be open on wednesdays from now on and that's just for drop-in session for anybody that would like to come and and sit in the building for private prayer or reflection so we're looking forward very much to welcoming members of the congregation and visitors back into the building so yeah it's an exciting time it's going to be nice it's great being online but there's something nice as well about experiencing worship back in the buildings Agreed, agreed. And it is an exciting time because we are working together in new ways and we're going to continue those conversations um, in the weeks to come um, and the joint worship service all throughout this month. And so Fiona, it's been great to have you um, be with us in worship and you're starting your studies soon, are you not? Yes, that's right. Yes, I'm back to university um, in a virtual sense um, on the 28th of September. Great. So that'll be, it'll be good to get back to 
back to doing that again yeah well, we're thankful that you have joined with us and joshua's not here today but i know he sends his blessings and he will be with you in the service this morning and i know kim is continuing with our kim Nay kids in fact i think we have a joke submission from contour and a child in contour this week so we're even having a few joint things happening with the kids which is fun so remember um dvds of this service are available transcripts are available if you want to give to um, anybody and need one of those this week and today is the day that the lord has has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us now hear our call to worship for today. Come, come and worship, you who woke early and you who slept late, you who come often and you who don't. Whether we are first or last or somewhere in between, there is room for all of us in God's kingdom and more than enough grace to go around. So come, let us worship our God together. Let us draw near to God in prayer. Let us pray. We lay down our privileges and approach the Lord in humility. Who and what we are in the world does not matter before his throne. We set aside our pretensions and come before God stripped bare. He sees through our folly and pride. We come only to worship a community of equals whose only claim is that we have found grace in the heart of God. Lord, we confess to you the times our comfort has blinded us to our privilege and to the want in others. I open a cupboard bulging with clothes and moan, I've got nothing to wear. I stare into a fridge groaning with fresh food, and exclaim, I'm starving. Forgive us for wanting more for ourselves in the face of those who truly have nothing, who actually starve. Forgive us, we pray, and make us content with the blessings we have received from your hand for your grace is sufficient for us. Amen.
Today's reading comes from the scripture of the New Testament. The reading is from the Gospel according to St Matthew. It's Matthew chapter 20, reading from verse 1. The parable of the workers in the vineyard. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day doing nothing? Because no one hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you've made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I'm jealous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. We looked at what for some is a most difficult parable. For many, in fact, I suspect, a difficult parable. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus begins his parables by saying, The kingdom of heaven is like, and then goes on to explain, it's like the seed of a mustard tree. It's like a lost pearl. It's like, and you know, many of the parables. But here he tells a story which maybe isn't as easy to comprehend. Maybe it's not as easy to take on board. If Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like, and said to me, it's like, a place of chocolate. You can eat chocolate from morning to noon. It won't damage your cholesterol. It won't cause you to put on any weight. I'd say I'd want to be there. But Jesus doesn't say that, does he? He doesn't con us. He doesn't appease us. He comes up with some wonderful stories about the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is like. And he tells that story. A story of the landowner and employing men to work in his fields. It's a time of harvest. It's a time when people were trying to get some work. I remember years ago, watching a black and white film on television. I think it was about the Great Depression. Anyway, the scene that stuck in my mind, and I, it's, it's not a horror film, but it was horrific for me, was to, to see these men standing at the gate of a factory wanting to get some work and the manager or the bosses come out and choose the fit and healthy ones or choose the ones that are crawlers choose the ones that will do anything just to earn some money and for the rest the gates are shut and they're locked out some of them look as if they haven't been fed 
They are wearing tatty clothes. It's a horror scene. And yet it happened. And it's nothing new, for that scene has been repeated down through history, and I suspect in some ways that scene is being repeated even today. Maybe not directly standing outside the workplace, but as people struggle to try and find jobs in this time of recession due to the pandemic. In Jesus' day, it was the same. You know, Moses might have led the people to the promised land, a land of milk and honey, but for many in Palestine, the land wasn't green and pleasant. It was rough and it was ready. It was only fit for sheep and goats. And there was a lot of unemployment. So at the time of harvest, some of the men who were unemployed would go and meet in the village square and wait for the landowners to come and choose them to do extra work bringing in the harvest. No combines in these days, just hard-working folk. And so at the start of the day, the people would gather and no doubt again, the fit and healthy would be chosen first. Then later on in the day, when it was found that these men weren't enough, they'd get some more and then some more and then some more. Until just at the end of the day, before the sun is setting, the landowner realises that there's still stuff to be brought in. I'll need some more. And he goes out and collects for the last hour of the day, some men to do the work on his farm. Once the day is passed, the wages are handed out. Those who work for the full day get a full day's pay. Those who work for part of the day get a full day's pay. Those who work just an hour of the day get a full day's pay. And that doesn't seem fair. That doesn't seem right. That would really offend a lot of people today. Why should somebody get the same for doing an hour's work that somebody's doing 12 hours work? That's just not right. And the person in the story who worked for 12 hours goes to the landowner and says, wait a minute, I've worked 12 hours. This, this guy's only worked an hour and he's got the same as me. That's not fair. I don't know what he expected the landowner to do, but the landowner in the story simply says, it's my money. I can do with it as I like. You got a fair pay. And so he did. He got a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. So what was he complaining about? He was complaining because he was comparing himself to others. Is that not human nature? Is that not what Jesus is getting at in this story? How easy it is to compare ourselves with our neighbour, to judge we are superior or not. I tell you, many ministers do that. They look at their neighbours, they look at their friends, they look at their colleagues and they think, I work harder. I don't work as hard. They're better at that. They're better than me. Or they're not as good as me. It's human nature. I guess in every walk of life we do that. We compare and we contrast and we judge ourselves compared to others. And Jesus is saying in this story that that's not what we should be doing. Jesus is saying in the story that God doesn't judge that way. That it's all about grace, folks. That amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves even someone like me. It's all about God's love for his creation, for you and for me. I love this story because... God's love is not based on reward. You know that phrase, we'll get our rewards in heaven. It's as if we've earned it. It's as if by our work that we have earned that gate to be open. To go back to that image of the film, the gate has been closed, but by our hard work, it's opened and we're able to cross through. But thank goodness, God's grace is such that it's not to do as a reward for me to reach heaven or for you to reach heaven. It's through grace that we are saved. Not because of what you or I did, but because of what our Lord Jesus Christ did on a cross in Calvary. He opened the door and allowed us to cross through, through faith in him. So what does that mean about those who are working hard for the kingdom and those who are, are not, as some would say? 
You know, to go back to the parable, the man who was working all day had the satisfaction of knowing all day that he had his pay coming. He didn't have to worry about it. The man in the city square who was passed up again and again and again had this fear of going home empty-handed, of not being able to feed his kids, not being able to pay his rent, not being able to look after his loved ones. He had that hanging on him all day. And even when he was employed for the last hour, he thought, well, I'll get something. But maybe only one of the kids will be able to be fed. Maybe only whatever. A terrible judgment. God's grace is that we are not in that situation. That God loves each and every one of us. It doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter what we do. We don't work hard to reach the kingdom of heaven. We work hard because we know there is a kingdom of heaven. And we want to serve our God who has given us so much through his son, Jesus Christ. And some may work for 12 hours in a day, some nine, some six, and some may only work a couple of minutes. But all of us achieve our, our salvation out of God's love for us. Not based on reward, not based on duty, not based on tradition, but based on that gracious love for God so loved the world that he sent his only son. The parable is one that grates with people. The parable is one that causes people to be concerned. It doesn't seem fair. But if God's judgment was based on fairness, on what we did, would our faults count against us? Pfft, mine would. I don't know about yours. But thanks be to God in his love, he can share it as he sees fit. And if we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then we shall be saved. The gates will never be closed, because Christ, through his love on a cross, has wedged them open. And God will say, come in, good and faithful servants. Not because of what we've done, but because of what we believe, and because he loves us. To me, that's what the parable is all about. And it takes a wee bit of a mind shift to come to that. But we all need to have a mind shift when we follow God. Amen. Good morning. We now bring our prayers for the world. Let us pray. Lord of all time and all places, we come before you now with our prayers for your world. Father God, when you created the earth, you bestowed upon us the gift of time, the gifts of day and night, a time to work and a time to rest. You gifted us with seasons of the year, so that we may have times to sow, to reap, and to rest. But we have taken this gift and become slaves to it. We allow time to control us. We are constantly held to account by the ticking of our watches. So busy clock watching that we have no time to be still in your presence. Our lives are busy and full. When we are young, we are wasteful with our time. And as we age, we start to chase time, grabbing, desperate to cling on to what we have left and to fill it with meaning. Yet, if we saw time as a gift and not a burden, we would take to the time to rest in your presence and be willing to be filled with your Holy Spirit. We ask you now to fill us full to brimming with your spirit, to fill our hearts with compassion for your world and all the people in it. 
We pray that you open our eyes to the people and places who need our prayers today. Hold us in the stillness and silence as we seek your presence. We pray for people displaced by violence or poverty, those seeking a better and safer life for themselves and their families. Today in particular, we pray for the migrant camp on the Greek island of Lesbos, where those already fleeing from persecution and danger saw their temporary homes destroyed by fire. We ask that you are visible in that place, that you walk beside them as they settle yet again into another new place. That you fill the hearts of those with the power to help them with compassion and with love. So that these people may find new purpose, new direction and new hope for their lives. We bring before you again the devastating effects of COVID-19. As the infection rate starts to rise again, we pray that you give us the strength and the wisdom to comply with the advice which will contain the spread and protect those around us. We hope for effective vaccines and treatments to be found so that we can return to living in full community with those around us. But the lessons of this pandemic may be learnt and that the good which has come about may continue to flourish without the presence of fear and anxiety. We ask for your blessing on our own communities, for the parishes of Kintour, of Kemney, Moni Musk, Clooney, Echt, Midmar, or wherever it is that we live. We ask to be instruments of your peace. Use us as your hands and your feet and your heart, that we may share your compassion and love in a practical way with those who are closest to us. Where there is conflict, we ask that you grant us wisdom and humility. And where there is pain, we ask for your healing love. We bring these prayers to you now. In the name of your Son, Jesus, who gave us the perfect example of prayer when he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Now go in peace. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, this day and forevermore. Amen.